So I wanted to go ahead and do a uh, talk on Raspberry Pis. Um, so just a little bit about me. Name's Ryan Tukazowski. Just did a um, just got my OSCP, so that's kind of fun. Do a Python incident response, malware analysis. A little bit about me there. So why am I doing a, ra a talk on Raspberry Pis? It's because everybody. How many people have Raspberry Pis? How many people use them on a daily basis? And that's the exact reason why I'm doing this and everything. It's one of those things where everybody got one, they're really cool, but they either don't use them or we say, I'll mess with it next week or something where I'm gonna go ahead and buy it or I want to buy one, but I'm not gonna buy it because it's really cool. I don't know the next time I have the time. So enough with your excuses. Congratulations, you get the lazy ass badge. Um, so for those who live under rocks, don't know what a Raspberry Pi is. It's a small ARM-based um, computer. They're 700 megahertz, 512 megs of RAM. Um, if you go with the version B, if you go with the other version of it, I think it's the version A, it's uh, 256 megs of RAM. Um, you have an SD card that runs off of it. it runs out, you can run Linux on there. There's some testing where they're trying to get Android running on there, but uh, it's still kind of still kind of flaky. And they're just really neat and really cool to play with. Um, so a couple places you can buy it. Uh, you can, first place you can buy it is Adafruit. Um, they have if you buy Arduino stuff, they have um, you can get it from. They have a lot of other hardware there. Um, you can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it from other sites. If you do a Google search for Raspberry Pis. Um, so just to give you a, for those for those who are interested, just to give you a price mark of it, um, that's the price breakdown of it there. Um, for most of us, we have. Uh, the, the spare SD card, we don't need a case, and we probably have the USB, cor the USB cables for it and everything. So the two that you might need would be the Raspberry Pi at C, the Raspberry Pi itself, maybe an HDMI cable, maybe an HDMI DVI cable. So it gives you a breakdown of what, of what the price would be for a Raspberry Pi if you're just getting into it. So to get started, assuming you have nothing to do, you have your SD card, you have your Raspberry Pi, you have your case, Nothing else, don't know what to do. So the first thing you do is you format the SD card. Um, it's a, it, if you're running Linux, it's simple. Open Gparted, right click, uh, delete, right click, new, FAT32 partition, apply. That's it, you're done there. Um, so the next, next part is to pick your poison. What, uh, what version of uh, Linux do you want there? What version for the Raspberry Pi do you want? Um, the very first one that you can use is a, it's called Berry Boot, and I just I recently found this, and it's um, you go ahead. It's a 30 meg, and my PowerPoint's all cut off, um, but it's a, a 30 meg um, zip file that you download. You once you're formatted, you go ahead and drop those files into the root of the SD card. Then you plug the SD card up to the Raspberry Pi, turn Raspberry Pi on, or just plug up for the power. And then once it's up and booting, you say, okay, I want Raspbian, I want Puppy Linux, I want OpenELEC, or I want Raspbian MC. So you just say, I want this, this, and it's also a bootloader. So there was um, a couple forum posts where, there, where people were, were dual booting um, Raspbian and, and Kali. So you, can, so you can do, so it's uh, essentially a bootloader as well. Um, and it's also good for a smaller SD card. So if you have like a one gig SD card where Raspbian needs two gigs to run, um, you can get it to run that one gig card. Just don't upgrade or you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna need to format. Did that. Uh, um, another one that, uh, that they recommend on the ra uh, Raspberry website is called Noobs. Um, again, it's just the same. You download it, you throw it in the, in the rear of the, direct of the flash card and you're done. Um, I haven't messed with it, so I can't really speak much to it. Um, and I've also I've put, I've put a couple links in here. So for those who are interested in messing with them, you can just go ahead and go to the share on the Nova Hacker in the Nova Hacker folder and just pull them down from there. And you can just download them from there. Um, so the one that um, that most people use is called Raspbian. And for anybody who's messed with Ubuntu or Debian or any other Debian uh, Debian based. Uh, version of Linux, it's very similar to that. It's just apt-get update, apt-get upgrade. So um, to get that in there, you uh, to get that onto the SD card, you just go, you um, you download the image, then you can use DD to go ahead and throw it on there. And I went ahead, in my case, I just put the command there. So you just DD it right to the the MMC card with a block size of one meg. Now once it, once that's done, it takes about 30 minutes depending on the speed of the card. Um, once that's done, you just put in the SD card, you boot it, the username password, the username Pi, password Raspberry, 
you're good to go. Then you you can change that boot, and they'll let you. It'll actually let you inflate the op the operating system, so you can take up the whole SD card. So if you're using like a 16 gig SD card, where Raspbian defaults to a two or four gig to a two or four gigs, then we'll go ahead and you can actually use the whole SD card. Um, and the process is the same for um, Arch Linux Pydora, which is um, a flavor of Fedora, uh, RaspBMC, and OpenELEC, which those two are, or OpenELK. And those, uh, the ra last two are for doing a media center. So if you're looking to set up a media center PC, you can go ahead and use that. Yes? What speed SD card would you recommend? Um, I'll, so the ones I've been using, I've been using the, I think it's category four, I think is what they're called, uh, or it's, it has a four on it. Um, I've seen for Cali, they recommend using a, a speed, a 10. So I don't know if it's, I don't remember if it's a category, what that classification is, so yeah. So good question. The faster card, the faster it's going to run for you. So, um, so for a lot of the people here, we probably gear more towards tech Cali. And again, it's the same. Download the Cali, the Cali ARM version, extract it to the extract it and DDD it to the SD card. Um, here, just use your uh, block size of uh, 512k. Insert your SD card, root and Tor, default password. You're good to go. Um, the only thing I the only thing I did notice when I was messing with Cali is it can be it can be a little sluggish um, when compared to Raspbian. I don't know if that's because it's um, Raspbian's using LXDE, uh, Cali's using Xface. I don't know if it's something with that. So um, the one that I actually went decided to go with was uh, Emulation Station. So the, what you do is the first thing you do is you go ahead and you install Raspbian. And then there's a script on the first page that you can download, and you just run that script, and it installs all the base stuff for you. And then if you want to configure your gamepad, but um, in my case, I was using a 360 controller with a USB plug, um, you can just run the script, and it will go ahead and it'll, it'll kick that off for you. And you can just go ahead and plug it in, drop your ROMs and emulators there, and you're good to go. So, and uh, for, for testing, I, I had a couple Super Nintendo games, uh, some Atari 2600, and a couple Sega games, and on the 8 gig card, I was only using 2.8 gigs, and that was the operating system and everything. So it's not, you don't need a lot of space to play with these and, and everything. So, to, so for some inspiration in what to do with your new operating system, with Kali, hack stuff. That's kind of a given. Um, open up in RaspBMC, you can use them as media centers. Um, for RaspBMC, you can do a retro gaming system. Um, another thing I, was, I had it with, I had an old uh, desktop that I couldn't upgrade at, just because of how old it was. So I went I mounted that, the, my, media sent my media via NFS to the Raspberry Pi, then used um, the Raspberry Pi to broadcast throughout my home with DLNA. So now I can go ahead and I can browse my, all my old movies right from my tablet, which is the straight DLNA streaming and everything. And that works same with the PS3. I was able to go and look at all my old movies from there. Um, you can use it as a SSH jump box, you can use it for VPN, you can use it for Tor, or in Kahuna's case, you can use it for war driving. So, um, uh, Thor had also asked about development. Um, you can go ahead and you can use, G there are some GPIO pins on there. Uh, I'm not familiar with the hardware side of things, but there was a really cool tutorial of that YouTube video. Um, and again, I posted this up on the share so everybody could grab it. Um, you can run, use Python, you can use GCC, you can use Perl. It has Apache, has all the PHP mods that you need there, so you can run full web server on there. You can run all your Python scripts, GCC, you can compile everything. And pretty much it's just the whole Linux operating system. So you can go ahead and really do whatever you want to with it. Um, a couple other projects I saw I saw out there. Um, one guy made a Tron outfit out of it with using the pins and, and controlling lights. Um, I've seen quadcopters. Uh, if people are into robotics, you can do robotics with it. Um, home automation, you can go ahead and do that and just network the pieces. So a couple things it can't do. Um, it's not good. Can't, can't swim. So if you drop it in water, probably won't work. Um, intensive processes, so if you're doing something that's really heavy, really intensive, you probably can't do it. And if it's that intensive, just slim it down. It should be slimmed down anyway. Um, Cali was a little slow, as I was mentioning. Um, I don't know if that's because of just Xface versus LXDE, or there's more stuff in there. Um, it's not good at eating ramen, so there's probably other stuff I missed. But um, So now that everybody has seen the Raspberry Pis, knows I'll, what you can do, which is pretty much anything. Get off your ass. Let's get the show on the road. So, any questions? Yes. Okay, I will take the devil horns then. <laughs>
Yeah. What about uh, HD capabilities? Have any limitations or hardware acceleration? For for just for just rendering video. So it comes. So it has a. It has an HDMI port on it. Um, it can do full 1080p. Um, and to my understanding, any video that you really throw at it is fine, if, as long as it's in that 1080p range. If you're th if you're trying to throw something like 4K at it, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to you're probably going to make the um, the graphics choke just because you're trying to just because that's a lot for that little itty bitty box to do. But if it's pure, if it's 1080p, you should be able to handle it. Um, you should be able to do H.264 on it. So. I've been doing the Rise BMC on it, and I have drawn 1080p like giant MKBs at it. Mm -hmm. It takes a little while to get started, mm -hmm. so I don't know if it's catching it or what, but it plays a flawless mm -hmm. Now, you can't like see through them, like mm -hmm. you could on Xbox or Mac, mm -hmm. but you play it, and you can jump through mm -hmm. them. So, that's um, also, when you're seeking between that, is that did you drop it on the SD card, or are you reading it from like an external USB drive? Uh, or the okay, okay, okay. So, any other questions? Cool.